Hi guys, happy four sleeps until Christmas. Happy almost Santa time. Hopefully you guys are all um, ready. I am not to be honest, so tonight might be a little bit shorter because um, I need to go get some Christmas shopping done. But I'm gonna do my usual, so I'm gonna answer your guys' questions that have come in throughout the week, as well as do your real estate update and um, do happy news, okay? So we're gonna dive into the first question. The first question comes from Misty, and Misty is in Innisfil. So Misty asks, I said I'm going the wrong way. Um, I've seen a few cute homes come up, but I'm afraid that I'll buy one and then I'll, uh, more houses will come up that I like better. What should I do? Thank you, Misty, for asking. That's come up um, a few times over the years or however long I've been doing this. So to be honest, there's always going to be other houses. Um, some you might not like better. Some might have better backyards. Some might have better parking situations. Some might have lower condo fees, etc. So there's always going to be other houses. You can't there's never going to be the one and never any better after that. So unfortunately, there's always going to be something like that. But maybe you might see one you like the counter and there's better. You could change there, um, yours or um, you obviously can't change the backyard or so forth. But just maybe check as many boxes as you, as you can. If you have 10 things on your want list, try and buy something that has at least, you know, eight of them, etc. So if two come off on another one, but maybe they don't have the other eight, you know what I mean? Then you won't feel as bad about it. So hopefully that helps. But unfortunately, there will never be a home that matches everything that you want so i can't say that that will happen okay but thank you for asking um i again do happy news so um these people i thought it was super cute they went in to buy a car and it was april of 2021 they bought a car they got talking with the salesperson and the salesperson basically said you know a bit of his life story he had grown up in foster care etc and never really had parents to call you know his own they ended up staying in contact and they invited him for uh, his birthday they then invited him for christmas which was just this christmas past and then they have invited him for a number of family dinners and stuff over the time since and then recently he just asked them to be his forever family even though he's 27 and now he's taken their last name which i thought was super cute so i like that um Oh, last day to vote, it says on here. Last day to vote, um, we won Top Choice Award the past three years in a row. So if you could vote for us, there should be a link um, in here or on my Instagram. So thank you guys for voting. And thanks for voting us for, us, uh, for us the past three years. So next question comes from Charles. And Charles is an Oro. Charles makes me think of my dog, Charlie, but he's Charles sometimes when he's in trouble. Um, Charles from Oro said, my wife and I have an island in Halliburton that we share with my brother and his wife. We don't want to sell, but they do. One, should we sell? And two, if we don't want to, how do we go about that? Um, thank you, Charles, for asking. So um, one, should you sell? That's obviously up to you. So um, I don't know how long you've had it in the family or how much you use it or what your kind of long-term plans are. If you're saying, hey, should we sell it now versus spring or should we sell it now versus 20 years from now? Obviously, those are different questions. So it kind of depends on that. Um, they are expecting the market to be lower in the spring than it is currently. So if you're looking at now versus spring, then I would do it now. But if you're looking now versus 25 years from now, etc., cetera, um, one would obviously assume it's higher in 25 years. If you do have to sell, you said, how would you go about that? So you would have to buy them out. So let's just say for easy numbers sake, the um, island is worth a million dollars. You would owe your brother and your brother's wife 500,250 each. Um, for example, so you would need to refinance it or get a line of credit or something like that to buy them out the 500000 So that was just for easy number's sake, but hopefully that helps. Uh, and feel free to reach out to me after if you have more questions. I know I do like kind of quick details on this, but just in case you have more, feel free to ask, okay? Um, next one is a 49-year-old woman, and basically she went into the doctors nine years ago, and she said, you know, I have pains, um, I can't reach up basically to get food in my um, kitchen. I can't close the trunk of my car. And he said that she had osteoarthritis and gave her, she called it, um, uh, what did she call it? A cocktail of drugs. And she said she didn't want to take a cocktail of drugs, so she wanted to take things into her own hands and she ended up weightlifting. So now it's nine years later and she's actually won three medals, one gold, one bronze, one silver, getting a little bit of everything, doing weightlifting. And she travels all over the world and she's actually somebody who didn't even like uh, going to the gym before. And now she does it obviously professionally. So she said if you had told her 10 years ago that she'd be traveling around the world weightlifting and winning medals, she never would have believed you. She's actually um, lost a third of her body weight as well doing this. And now obviously she's super fit and active. So I like that. She didn't want to just take it. Okay, I'll take these pills the rest of my life. She uh, wanted to get fit herself. So I loved that. Um, the next question comes from... 
Ursula and Ursula is in Bradford. Ursula said, I have a home to sell, but think I should finish the basement as it is very small and maybe it would appeal to more people to have it done. What do you think? Um, thank you, Ursula, for asking. So to be honest, like I just said to the last uh, fellow, that the market is predicted to be lower in, you know, say, for example, May than it is right now. So if, for example, you were to get your basement finished and then it was ready in May, you know, you might have just washed that money out and you could have got the same price now that you would get then. Um, it's not known exactly, obviously, what um, the price change will be because obviously it depends on the interest rates. But I would say, you know, that it wouldn't make sense um, if, for example, your son can do it. I just made that up in the next three weeks. Then that's OK because it's still not pushing towards that. The next interest rate possible hike is January 25th. Um, and then it jumps to March after that. It doesn't mean it's going to go up January 25th, but that's just the next possible one, okay? So I personally wouldn't do it. it obviously, if your home is 600 square feet, etc., cetera, um, it is really tiny, but I just showed a client a property yesterday, and it said 980 square feet plus a walkout basement, so we thought 980 square feet plus another 980 square feet. Turns out it was 980 square feet counting both, so uh, the floors are obviously less than 500 square feet, so super tiny, but it ended up having three offers and going over asking, so um, I would... Uh, Feel free to reach out to your realtor if you have a trusted realtor or myself if you do not have one and I can give you some details uh, in relation to size depending where you are, etc. Oh, you said where you were actually. Um, you were in Bradford. So yeah, feel free to reach out. Uh, feel free to reach out if you don't have a realtor. Otherwise, reach out to your realtor and hopefully they can help you out a bit more. Okay, thank you for asking. Um, next, there was a couple that waited um, two years because of the pandemic for their honeymoon. They ended up going to uh, Barcelona and they were walking to a park and basically they saw some ladies outside that were very disgruntled and seemed like something was going on and they went over and there was smoke coming out of the door next to where all these women were the women were not speaking english they could not speak spanish so they went in the building these two 38 year olds on their honeymoon not knowing what was if it was a complete fire inside if there was anybody inside if there was what was going on i don't know why they just ran in Turns out it was a nursery and they started like loading up kids into cribs and just carrying them out and all of the babies ended up being safe. So it was a randomness that they did not plan for on their honeymoon. They planned for basically everything else to the dot, but not on saving a bunch of kids in the nursery. So that was cute. A family, uh, not a family, but a young couple, uh, 38 on their honeymoon, saved a whole bunch of babies. So that was cute. Um, so I'm going to get into real estate now, like, um, we mentioned at the beginning, it's the last day to vote for us. So if you have not voted or you would like to vote again, please feel free to vote. And again, the link I think should be right there. So thank you guys for voting. And again, for uh, making us the top choice, number one real estate agency in Barrie the last three years in a row. We appreciate that, of course, and, um, are thankful that we tend to do 90 to 92% of repeat and referral business every year. So thank you guys for that. Okay, so each week I like to cover different things. So last week I covered a lot locally in Simcoe County and so forth. So this week I'm going to do a bunch of different things. But the first one I'm going to touch on is basically people buying pre-con, so meaning pre-construction. So they're buying before they're built. So for example, they go out, there's a big field. There's often you see a trailer and it has like pictures of families walking their dog or what have you. You go inside and you pick, okay, on this map I want to be this house. Um, I want to get this um, layout and you pick your tiles and so forth and then you wait X amount of time till it's ready. So what has been going on basically with that is that people aren't getting their financing for it. So let's just say, for example, they bought the home for 1.2 million. Now it get, it's getting appraised at 900. Who is coming up with that extra 300,000? And then even the people that are getting approved, they're they're getting approved. Okay, yeah, you're approved for 1.2 million or what have you. But because the interest rates are higher, and plus they have to approve at the 2% higher than that uh, set interest rate, then they're not approving for that, okay? So that is an issue. So there's actually um, a new build uh, site in Brampton. There's over 100 families and they have been petitioning, basically saying like the houses are not worth it. So either come down to the price that was appraised for or give us an extension till uh, the interest rates go down which we don't obviously know when that might be. So they've gone up seven times in 2022. And again, I mentioned the next time is January 25th that it could possibly go up. So for example, there's a fellow and he paid 1.959 for his home. It was going to be for himself, his mom, and his two children and wife. And now is appraised at 1.7. So he's already put $260,000 down on the home. And originally when he purchased the home, the interest rate said, hey, your, in, um, your payments every month will be between 5500 and 6000 which was fine with the jobs that he had. But now he's getting uh, quotes anywhere from 12000 a month to 15000 a month. Plus, he has to come up with this extra money, and he's already put the 260 down, etc. So him and many other people in this community 
are saying we we can't close on this we haven't slept in three months etc so that's something commonly that's been going on that's why i just wanted to go over it here with you guys and um on a side note i was wondering you know he bought this 1.959 home and it's his first home so i just found that odd um to buy almost a two million dollar home as your first home seemed a little bit crazy for me um, they have said, the builders said, hey, we'll give you three months extra. But some people are like, well, what if the interest rate's higher in three months? And then we say, okay, yeah, we'll wait for three months. And then they end up paying even more in three months on their interest rate and so forth. So they're, you know, really leery of what to do. And if they do walk away, then, for example, they can lose their deposit. And then let's just say the home is only sold for $1.4 million and they paid $1.979. Then the builder can go um, after them for that difference as well as any damages any holding costs etc so that is not good and a lot of these people again are petitioning and saying they're not sleeping etc um, and so forth so that's something that's been going on with new builds um, I have said throughout this whole thing like certain times you know um, prices are up and so forth and the only time that people have really lost so far is just like in 2017 the people that bought February March etc so those are the people that are losing if they bought then and they have to sell right now if they don't have to sell right now they're fine but just like these new builds they didn't you know get possession of their homes in February for example but they did buy at those high prices and now that's coming due that the homes are almost ready now they're trying to get um, secure financing and mortgages etc and that's where they're having the issue so that is a problem. So those 100 homes are in Brampton. And so, for example, in February, the average price in Brampton was 1.608. And now the average price is 1.197. So that's over 25.5% down. So they're like, where are we getting this extra money from? There were 460 homes that sold in February in Brampton and um, detached homes, by the way. And now there was 142 in November. So obviously just less homes are selling. And that I've said every week, I'm not going to do statistics for Brampton, but every week it's kind of shown that and I let you guys know that. Um, so the variable rate in February, so like when these people were looking, might have been around the 1.45 range. Um, hi Mary, how are you? Hi Jessica, hi Justin. I haven't said hi to everybody, but hopefully you guys are well. So the variable rates in February were around 1.45 and the fixed rates were around 2.89. Right now the variable rates are sitting around 5.45 and the fixed rates around 5.49. So obviously that is a big gap, especially when, or jump when people, you know, are buying these $2 million homes, etc. So it's making it that much harder. And like I did mention, they still have to approve at that 2% higher. So if they're locking in at the 5.49, they have to approve at 7.49. So even some people are like, hey, I'm, I'm okay to pay the 5.49, etc. Their, you know, debt to service ratio, so what they make versus what they spend, doesn't make sense at the 7.49. Not even makes sense, just doesn't go with, you know, what the banks say, you have to be under 40% or, or what have you, which means if you make 100,000, you have to um, spend 40,000 or less, just as a quick math. Um, so what else? So the CEO um, of the Canadian Home um, and Builders Association, he said, with inflation costs and the cost to basically get contractors out and the cost to hold projects longer because of financing, et cetera, that the um, builders don't have much flexibility as well. So they're saying, hey, you can't put it on the builders because you know they um, gave their end of the bargain. They give you, gave you the home that you agreed to pay for. So they're saying it's not on them, but these people are like, well, we don't have the money to do it and so forth. So it's a bit of a myth. Um, however, the Bank of Canada did hint, they said they're hinting that they might uh, be done with their rate hikes. However, um, that is kind of up for negotiation, kind of depends who you ask, but they did say they hinted that they might be done with that, which would be amazing. Um, so how much of your income is actually going towards your home uh, as in paying for your mortgage? So in um, Ontario, is 62.7%, and that's Ontario as a whole. Um, obviously, if you do just Toronto, for example, it is going to be higher, and that's 14.5% higher than it was last year, okay? So over 62% of people's income is going towards their mortgage and their home. Now, um, even though in the 80s and 90s there were interest rates that were even above 14%, they're actually saying that it's harder to get a home right now than it was in the 90s, because obviously homes were cheaper back then, um, but just what people made versus the home prices, and even though the interest was really high, um, just what people make, and again, the, high, the house price is being so high, it's even higher now than the 80s and 90s to buy, even though the interest rates aren't like at the 14% or 11% or anything like that, um, but that's what they are saying, okay? As we know, the two most expensive provinces or territories to buy in Canada are, you can guess, BC and Ontario. So in BC, it's actually even worse. So over 85%, 85.2% to be exact of your income on average is going towards your home, which is crazy. And um, 
I just lied. I said BC. That was Toronto. Sorry, 85.2 was Toronto. BC is even worse. BC is 95.8. And it's supposed to be one of the hardest places to get a mortgage in the world, which is crazy, and buy a home. Like, 95% of your income is going towards your home. That is insane. Uh, my grandpa used to live out there, but uh, no longer is with us. Um, and they're saying that this is the hardest of any generation um, in Canada to get into the home market, which is also crazy uh, because of the high amount of to buy a home, now yeah, what it costs. So Royal Bank said that the prices are stabilizing, and they also said that the um, sorry interest rate stabilizing will help restore the balance. And Royal LePage, so they expect a drop of 14%. So there was one the other day that said 11.3% in Ontario. Um, Royal LePage is guessing 14%, but they are guessing that from the peak of 2022. But if you have been watching anywhere um, for anything, you've seen that it's gone up way more than 14%, sometimes 32%, sometimes 47%, etc. So if it were to adjust 14%, it's not actually that big of a deal because we've had such significant gains over the past few years. Um, so yeah, even though we're not accustomed to anything going down, it's not actually that huge of um, a deal because of that. And um, so a lot of people think like, okay, next time there's voting, you know, politicians will help, etc. So lots of politicians try and say, we're going to make more homes available. We're going to make more subsidies available. We're going to make more um, uh, low income housing available, etc. The problem when they do the subsidies is that then puts more people into the market. So more people can then buy homes around 500,000 or 600,000 or whatever they're helping people out to do, which just drives the prices up higher because again, then there's bidding wars, etc. again. So that is a problem with that. And then obviously politicians like to say things just to get votes. So either one, they don't usually follow through with what they do, or two, if they do, it's a plan that doesn't work. So they're like, oh, I'm going to do this, 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 but then the plan doesn't work. So that is a problem. Um, and I'm sure you've heard of like this drop or that drop, etc. But I did mention last week that year to date in Barrie and year to date in Simcoe, so from January 1st to now, um, as well as January 1st to the same time in 2021 it's actually up this year in Barry and Simcoe over 12 percent so one was like 12.8 percent and I forget the other one 12 point whatever it was so it's actually up over that from last year uh which is great and um what was I gonna say oh yeah er earlier this year obviously it was a seller's market now it's more balanced so across Canada they've looked at every single market in a recent study and only 11 markets were said to be um, seller's markets, whereas the beginning of this year was like everybody was a seller's market. So now they're saying the only 11 markets are seller's markets. I won't say them all because, to be honest, some of them I have never even heard of where they are. But the ones that I do know where they are are um, Timmins, Alberta, which is west part of Alberta, Fredericton, Newfoundland. Um, I don't actually know. Trois. It's basically saying Three Rivers, wherever that is. I'm guessing in Quebec. Uh, Medicine Hat as well as northern New Brunswick and central Alberta. So those are the ones they're saying are still a seller's market, and everywhere else is a balanced market. CREA, which is the Canadian Real Estate Association, so their chairperson or CEO type person, um, Jill, as well as CREA as senior economist Sean Cothert, said that they think uh, in 2023 it'll be the first time, the first spring in years, that we haven't seen bidding war left, right, and center. They said there might be the odd bidding war, but it's not going to be like normal spring, where it's crazy bidding wars all the time. They think it's just going to be balanced, and a lot of economists have called this a balanced territory that we're moving into. So that is good, um, especially for people buying, because it has been quite frustrating as a buyer to get into the market and be competing against all these people going 100,000 over asking, 200,000 over asking, 520,000 over asking, etc. It's been crazy. So going back into balanced territory, as they're calling it, uh, will be really refreshing for buyers. No craziness and not, you know, having to worry that you overpaid for a property. And I just want to make sure you guys get the full picture of everything before you jump to conclusions, before you call your friends, etc. So um, there was a recent article and it said that the market has slumped more uh, to its lowest levels than it has in a decade. So it's not that the house prices are down from a decade, like, oh, they're lower than they were in 2012, or they are as low as they were in 2012. That's not the case. It's just the amount of home selling, okay? So I just want to make sure, again, you guys have the whole picture before you guys tell everybody or tell your family or go chatting on Christmas break, etc. So yes, um, less homes are selling, basically, than in the past 10 years have been selling. However, the home prices are not down to that, again. So from um, January 1st to now, we're actually up. 12.8% uh, over last year at the same time. Okay, so just make sure, making sure you guys have the whole picture. So in Simcoe County, 
Uh, in November, for example, obviously December's not over yet. In December, there were 416 homes sold in Simcoe County. So 321 were detached, nine were semis, 42 were townhomes, and the rest obviously were condos. Um, average days on market has changed. So obviously back last year, you know, homes were selling for about 106.5% of asking. This year, they're cheating around the 96%, etc. cetera. Um, but days on market is off also gone up as well. Before we would list it, we'd hold offers, etc. So now, for example, in Agila, this were, these were all from November, and Agila homes on the market were averaging 34 days. Bradford was 26 days. Clearview was 65 days. New Tecumseh was 40 days. Oro was averaging uh, 35 days on market before selling. Panatang was 64 days on market. Uh, Romero was 32 days on market. And Severn was 38. Spring Water was 33. T Tay had the tiniest amount, only four days, and I thought maybe only one home sold, etc. But there was actually uh, like a dozen something homes that sold, and they still averaged four days on market, which was yay for Tay <laughs> for November. And Tiny was 52 days on market. So just a reminder to you guys, if you don't know, we do have the guaranteed sales program. So if we don't sell your house within 60 days, we will buy it for cash. It's not us, um, actually, it's our investors. But so again, our guaranteed to sell your home within 60 days or we'll buy it for cash. So you don't have to worry about holding two mortgages or anything like that. So you can be at ease when you're looking on the other end. And also on the other end, for example, you think the market's going to crash or it does crash, crash or what have you, that if the market does go down and you have to sell, we will sell your home for free. So you don't have to worry. We don't want everybody being stressed, etc. So if you have any questions about that or any details, feel free to call us at the office at 705-726-7000. Again, 705-726-7000. The next question comes from Josh and Josh is in Beaton. Uh, so Josh says, once the Bank of Canada stops upping interest rates, how long do you think it'll be until prices, sorry, home prices go up again? Um, thank you, Josh, for asking. And that is a super question. The problem is it's not just fake based off of interest rates, right? So it depends how many homes are on the market. Have they, because they want to build 1.5 million homes in the next 10 years, have they built 100,000 of them? Have they built 20,000 of them? Have they built zero? Have they built 300,000 of them, etc.? That obviously makes a difference as well as immigration. So like have people say, hey, I want to come to Canada, but they only want to go to Alberta or I only want to go to Quebec now, or is it still, you know, what they're predicting? So all three of those affect it. So the interest rates affect it. Um, immigration as well as the supply. So um, I can't fully answer that because it depends on everything, okay? So I apologize. I'm sure that's not what you wanted to hear. Um, there was a 29-year-old gym owner, and he worked out five days a week, etc. He did powerlifting, etc., but it was really tested when there was a car accident outside of his gym the one day. When he went outside, there were already four people, and they were trying to lift this Jeep Cherokee off a man that was pinned and injured underneath. And he just went to the back. The back was smashed of the um, Jeep. And he just started to lift. He said he had tunnel vision and just wanted to lift it. And he lifted it up. And it was two tons, which is over 4,400 pounds, which is insane to me. Anyways, obviously, the man was um, pulled to safety. And he went and visited him um, a week later in the hospital. He obviously has, like, a lot of damages and internal bleeding. But he's supposed to be okay. And a lot of the nurses were calling him a hero and Hulk and that kind of thing. And he doesn't consider himself a hero, but he did like the Hulk expression just because his son loves Hulk. So he thought that it'd be cute if his uh, son heard that the nurses were calling their or his dad or what have you Hulk. So he liked that, but obviously um, just going out and above for um, any, somebody that he didn't even know. So I like that. Um, next question comes from Mark and Mark is in Barrie. Where am I here? Um, Mark said, I know you have rentals and investments as someone who dabbles in renovations. What do you think is the best to get into, but not to get in over my head? Um, thank you, Mark, for asking. So it's hard. So I don't know, for example, your budget. So if you say, for example, I have 200,000 and that counts buying the home and doing renovations, or you say I have $30,000 to do renovations and buy a home, or I already have bought the home and I have X amount of dollars. So it kind of depends what you're doing. But if you're looking for, um, you know, what has least risk, et cetera. So single family homes have least risk. So they're not going to have two tenants, you know, a duplex up and down. And they complain, she scratched my car. She's noisy at night. I hear her alarm go off every day. She bangs around, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
but you don't have the same return. So if, for example, you have a single family home and that person doesn't pay you know, the rent for the month, then you're stuck because there's nobody else there. Whereas if you have a duplex, which I always like, then if one person doesn't pay or one person's behind, you have the other person. So I always like that. Same with triplexes, et cetera. Obviously, the bigger you get in that, I did like that. Um, and then, for example, room rentals, just like Airbnbs, they have the most return on your dollar. However, they also have the most hassle. Um, they could party. They could annoy each other, etc. So the more people you start to deal with, the more chance of issues that you have. So it just depends how much you want to get into it. And um, I can, again, answer more if you have more questions. But I know that was a general. We're just trying to keep it short here for people. So thank you for asking. Um, obviously, in Ontario, we don't get avalanches. But in Utah, that was not the case. There was an avid skier. And he went out, um, you know, for a ski back country kind of thing and ended up in an avalanche. And he thought he was basically a goner. Um, he ended up, even with broken bones, etc., um, basically digging his way out of where he was and got his way to the surface somehow, started screaming. And there was an EMT that was also skiing um, not too far away. On his day off, he heard him, eventually found him, etc. Stayed with the man. He couldn't, like, carry him or, or what have you because of all of his broken bones and so forth. Um, but he waited with him for eight hours on his day off until um, somebody else found them because there was no cell service, etc. Um, and, and I don't know. I don't know if he didn't want to leave him and then not be able to find him again. I'm not really sure. But obviously, I'm sure that guy uh, thanked his lucky stars or whatever you want to call it uh, that somebody found him just before Christmas. Um, next question comes from Stephanie and Stephanie is in Barry. Stephanie said, how much different is it usually from a B lender to a private lender? Um, thank you, Stephanie, for asking. To be honest, I haven't done a private lender in a while. Back in the day, it used to be like regular was around two. Um, B lenders, regular as an A. Sorry, I should say that. Regular lenders, um, A lenders were around 2%, and then B lenders were around 5%, and privates were anywhere from 8 to 12. But now, obviously, A lenders are not two, and they're more close to the five. Like I said, 5.45, 5.49 right now. So then obviously that's going to bump up your B lenders. I'm guessing more to the eight range. And then it's also going to bump up your privates as well because everybody wants to be relative, right? Just like when the price of lumber went up, then that composite kind of lumber, those decks that don't rot or whatever, they, once the lumber wrote, like went up, they're like, well, we have to go up too because we're always higher than them. So that, I don't know the exact of privates right now, but that's normally what it is that they're obviously a bit higher, but thank you for asking. Um, would you buy your spouse a house? Um, that's obviously rhymes. There was a fellow in, um, I don't know if I said where he was. Oh, North Carolina. North Carolina. He's 38, has five children, and he bought his wife her prior home that she lived in as a child um, in the 80s. Uh, it was built in 1906, and basically her parents had to sell it. It was too big for them, etc. cetera. Um, too much upkeep and so forth. So he ended up picking it up and renovating it and so forth. So um, obviously a beautiful surprise to her. Whether she wanted to live there or not, I'm not sure where she grew up. But I just thought it was cute that, um, you know, he surprised his 35-year-old wife with her old home. And um, obviously such character and charm in something um, from 1906. So I don't know what you're going to get for Christmas from your spouse. But maybe you'll get a house like this young lady did in North Carolina. Um, anyways, just a reminder, if you guys can vote for us, that would be amazing for the Top Choice Award. I hope you guys have a super Christmas. Stay safe. Uh, go after all of your dreams. And um, until next time, be kind to one another. Take care.